I mean, if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Hey, Bishop Jakes, how What's are you? What's up, man? Ah, oh, man, it's so good to see you. It's, it's so better good. to see you. How you doing? All the champagne was spiked, son. Like, all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the f out. I don't drink. I don't drink, so I was playing that s like, I don't f drink. I smoke n Like, I smoke and I had my own weed, but, like, everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the f door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the f was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against ass cheeks. I heard n struggling to take dick. I heard being like, yeah, daddy, daddy, when, when I when, when he started call, all that daddy this and daddy that, and then I heard some hollering and struggling like, yeah, I kept the phone and I recorded all this because I was like, this Diddy bitch. So I'm finna, finna put the squeeze on. And give me y'all our girl Monique, the fierce and fearless comedian and actress has been sitting on some jaw-dropping evidence for quite some time. And now it's finally out in the open for the world to TD Jakes was evidently desperate to keep this devastating secret hidden. According to reports, he went to extreme lengths to keep Monique from exposing the recording, including threatening and blackmailing her. He must have realized that if this went out, it would be disastrous for his imaging career. Despite the pressure and intimidation, Monique held her ground. Monique has always been one to speak her mind, no matter the consequences. She just embarked on a mission to uncover the dark and hidden elements of the entertainment industry. She's not sparing anyone, no matter how powerful they are. Her courage in bringing these truths to light is not only admirable, but also revolutionary. In a world where secrets may ruin lives and careers, Monique is breaking down the barriers to quiet. She is exposing everyone and everything, and she was not going to let T.D. Jake slip through the cracks. With this recent revelation, she makes it obvious that no one is above accountability and the ramifications will be interesting to observe. Monique's voyage of revelation began with a bang as she focused her attention on some of the most powerful personalities in the entertainment industry. Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey topped her list. Monique has publicly accused them of blackballing her in Hollywood, following her Oscar win for Precious, claiming they attempted to silence her and ruin her name. Her aggressive charges and steadfast position shook the industry, triggering conversations about power dynamics, fairness, and how talent is treated in Hollywood. But Monique did not stop there. Her crusade for truth and openness took a sudden turn when she turned her attention to seeing Diddy Combs a music and entertainment industry figure with significant influence. She began to reveal the behind-the-scenes acts and unethical dealings, exposing the hidden truths of working with the mogul. The Diddy disclosures provided another dimension to her campaign, demonstrating her willingness to expose the strong while protecting the disadvantaged. Now it's T.D. Jake's turn to face Monique's unrelenting examination. With the revelation of the incriminating audio, the renowned preacher, whom many see as a spiritual leader, found himself in Monique's crosshairs. As she exposes each character one by one, it becomes evident that Monique is on a mission to hold everyone accountable, regardless of status or influence. Lay my hands on your bishop, and he said, ah, ah. and then the is on the internet. He's ah, he doing all of this, right? And then there's a woman on, on, the, on the dais. And then there's a woman on the day a lawsuit was filed against music mogul seen Diddy Combs, accusing him of some serious stuff, harassment, illegal drug activity, and even trafficking. But this is when it becomes very intriguing. The case also refers to Bishop T.D. Jakes. Apparently, Diddy was expecting that the high-profile pastor would help him clean up his image among the uproar. The complainant in this explosive lawsuit is Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer who claims to have damaging proof against comms. We're talking about images and other evidence that allegedly show Diddy's dubious actions. This lawsuit is painting a very gloomy image of the music icon, and it's bringing a lot of important names to the forefront. Now, let us talk about Bishop T.D. Jakes.
He is not a defendant in the lawsuit, but the fact that his name appears in this context raises some questions. Jakes, a well-known megachurch pastor headquartered in Dallas, appears to have been viewed by Diddy as a potential ally to assist him restore his shattered reputation. It's crazy to think about, given Jake's prominent standing in the religious community. And if you thought that was enough drama, the lawsuit does not end there. It also mentions various record labels and a few surprising people, such as actor Cuba Gooding Jr., Diddy's son Justin Dyer Combs, and his chief of staff, Christina Corum. The network of claims and relationships is extensive and frightening. Jake's name appears only once among all of these charges, but it is noteworthy. The suit claims Jones has indisputable evidence of Combs' dubious plans. Combs appears to have attempted to utilize his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to mitigate the negative impact on his public image caused by another lawsuit brought by Cassie Ventura. Ventura, an R&B singer, has accused Combs of several horrific crimes, including rape and physical abuse throughout their relationship. This case against Combs is just one of many that have surfaced recently. And if that wasn't enough, the news was filled with rumors of federal authorities raiding Combs' residences. They ended up grabbing guns and other stuff, adding to the already dramatic scenario. So, while Jakes is only named once in this lengthy suit, the fact that his name is brought into this high-profile problem speaks loudly about Combs' purported efforts to recover his reputation. According to the lawsuit, Mr. Jones, a heterosexual Christian man, was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs advances and stated this to Mr. Combs' head of staff, defendant Christina Cora. This is not just about unwelcome advances, however. Jones further claims that Combs forced him into some extreme scenarios, such as courting female employees and hosting them at Combs' Miami home. Jones claims that all of this caused him severe bodily, financial, and emotional harm. As a result, he is seeking monetary and punitive damages, as well as other forms of compensation. On the other hand, Combs' lawyer, Aaron Dyer, has been outspoken regarding Combs' innocence. Dyer has made it obvious that Combs would battle every day to clear his name. So while Jones details serious claims and seeks justice, Combs' team prepares for a difficult court battle. So in late 2023, there was quite a stir when unconfirmed reports of asterisk asterisk misbehavior at Combs hosted parties began to bring Bishop T.D. Jakes into the forefront. This all began in December, when a TikTok and YouTube video surfaced alleging that Jakes did not address these claims directly. But during his Christmas Eve sermon, he made a sharp remark, I will not utilize this precious day and pulpit to address a lie when I have the opportunity to preach the truth. This was his method of quelling the rumors without giving them any more airtime. Fast ahead a bit, and Jake's name reappears in the most recent comms case. This time, representatives from Jake's ministry and businesses have chosen to remain silent about their recent connection. However, they have already stated that these assertions are absolutely incorrect. Derek Williams, the executive vice president of TD Jake's Entertainment, also issued a statement regarding Jake's relationship with Combs. He noted that Jake's and Combs have a long history with Combs founding Revolt Media and TB, a Black-owned media company. In 2021, Revolt launched a sermon series hosted by Jake's, highlighting the two's professional links. Williams also mentioned that he and Jake's had stopped by Combs' birthday celebration. This was a casual, friendly drop-in that appeared somewhat harmless at the time. Interestingly, Combs has since resigned as chair of Revolt, giving a new twist to the story. So while Jake's is once again embroiled in the tornado of controversy surrounding Combs, his team is standing fast against the accusations. But we're all aware that all they're doing is damage control. We both welcome the family. Bishop Jake's recorded a little birthday video and then left to attend our other scheduled meetings. William stated that any charge to the contrary is completely unfounded, unconfirmed, and wrong. 
Bishop T.D. Jakes, 66, gained attention during a weekend lecture. The congregation listened intently, but they had no idea what was going to happen. As Jakes confronted the accusations square on, the mood in the room changed from expectation to astonishment. Jake surprised everyone by not only denying the claims, but also unwittingly revealing something much more intriguing. The crowd gasps and widens its eyes. There was an entirely new layer to this already heated story. What sinister mysteries were hidden behind closed doors at Diddy's VIP events? And how did Bishop Jakes get involved in this unforeseen conflict? It was a story that demanded to be unraveled. Despite their greatest efforts to conceal what had happened, Monique refuses to budge. In fact, she targets and exposes him in her comedic performances. Now, why would a holy man mention swallowing in the middle of a sermon? Monique, the queen of unvarnished comedy, recently used her sharp wit on none other than Bishop T. E. Jakes. It all happened during a violent stand-up gig in Louisville, Kegli, on April 12th, when Monique criticized Jake's renowned lecture from December. If you know anything about Monique, you know she isn't subtle. So when she heard Jake's metaphorical come out of the closet sermon, she viewed it as an opportunity to unleash her brand of uncensored commentary. Let's just say she did not hold back. In classic Monique manner, she delivered a punchline that had the audience gasping for air. With a malicious glitter in her eyes, she asked, how the F is this N talking about D asterisk asterisk king on the pulpit? I'm like, yes, N I swallowed, have you? Yes, it is correct, and many others agree with her. One admirer remarked, T.D. Jakes was hiding in plain sight the entire time. There was a lot of talk about Bishop T.D. Jakes and his strange friendship with Diddy at those wild events. People couldn't help but question why a clergyman like Jakes would want to hang out with a bunch renowned for their outrageous chin digs, especially since there were allegations of all sorts of dubious stuff going on. Some others speculated that Jake's had more than a passing interest in what went on at these upscale events. They were speculating that he was somehow participating, or at least turning a blind eye to the less than savory events going on under Diddy's roof. You can understand how these assumptions sparked a whole lot of turmoil. Jake's reputation suffered as a result of certain people looking at him strangely. It was a difficult situation to be in, particularly for someone known for their strong moral compass. Throughout it all, Jake's maintained his position, saying that he had nothing to do with the catastrophe. He stood firm in his faith and principles, even when rumors were flying fast and furious. It turns out that Puffy had his own motivations for the alliance, in addition to Bishop T.D. Jakes. You see, rubbing hands with a bishop like Jakes was more than simply casual camaraderie for Puffy. It was a strategic maneuver to improve his image. In the glamorous world of entertainment and high society, perception is everything. What better method to improve your reputation than to befriend a famous religious figure like Bishop Jakes? For Puffy, being seen with a bishop gave him an air of credibility and respectability that money could not buy. Sure, Puffy was already well-known in the music and entertainment industries, but there's always room to move up the social ladder. And what better way to improve his status than to associate with someone as prestigious as Bishop Jakes? So while their friendship appeared improbable at first glance, it made perfect sense within the context of their different worlds. Puffy saw hanging out with Bishop Jakes as more than just a personal relationship. It was a calculated move to improve his image and cement his status among Hollywood's elite. Furthermore, allegations and whispers regarding illicit activities at Diddy's parties continued to circulate. Diddy and Bishop T.D. Jakes found themselves in a perilous situation. It was like a high-stakes game of reputation roulette, and both were determined to win. But this is when it becomes very intriguing. Some astute observers began connecting the dots and developed a theory that sent shockwaves across the chatter network. They argued that Bishop Jakes was not only hanging around with Puffy to promote his friend's image. Oh no, there was a much deeper agenda at work here. 
According to this argument, Bishop Jakes may have also had a vested stake in cleaning Diddy's name. After all, if Diddy's reputation plummets, the bishop's image may suffer as a result of association. So, by standing by Puffy's side, Jakes may be perceived as actively fighting to protect not only Puffy but himself as well. But some speculated that Jakes couldn't simply abandon his friendship with Puffy, even if he wanted to. Why? The rumor mill was spinning with rumors that Puffy might have some information that could implicate the bishop in the very issue they were attempting to distance themselves from. The bishop is clearly caught between a rock and a hard place, unwilling to break away from a friendship that may be more trouble than it's worth. And all the while, murmurs and speculation fueled the flames, leaving everyone wondering what secrets might be hidden behind those elite parties' closed doors. And, as you are aware, nothing is ever quite as it appears in the world of the rich and famous. Well, it seems out Diddy may have had a secret interest of documenting everything that happened at his gatherings. Yes, you heard that correctly. According to the complaints, there is fairly persuasive proof that Diddy was acting as a director behind the scenes, documenting all of the salacious hitchings that took place at his expensive parties. And if it doesn't send shivers down your spine, don't know what does. This is where things become purely speculative. But bear with me, because it's too intriguing to pass up. If Diddy was the brains behind these secret recordings, it stands to reason that he would have had some extremely incriminating evidence on his hands. Consider this. If you're holding parties that are known for pushing the boundaries, there's a good probability that some compromising behavior is recorded. And if Diddy had dirt on everyone who passed through his doors, let's just say he'd be in complete control. This is when Bishop T.D. Jakes enters the picture, if he was a regular at these events. As reports claim, it's not out of the question that he wound up on one of those tapes. And if he had anything on the bishop, you can bet your bottom dollar that he would have some major leverage. It's a shocking concept, to be sure, but in the world of the wealthy and powerful, everything is conceivable. And as the cases continue to develop and additional information emerge, it appears that we are only touching the surface of what happened behind the closed doors of Diddy's VIP parties. Now, what happened behind the closed doors of Diddy's VIP parties? Here's when things become a little more difficult. <laughs> 